Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn. Today I'm having a bit of a look at one of the cauldrons within the game. Now so far I've only done one cauldron and this one in this video makes the second cauldron. Cauldrons are essentially optional dungeons that the player can engage in. And well they're very very well made. But first I want to take on one of these tall necks here. Now I say take on but I'm not going to fight it. What we've got to do is figure a way up on its back, and as you can see, it is a massive thing indeed. Now, for those of you that have played the game, you will know that there are about four or five of these or so scattered around the map, and what they do is cause a fog of war effect over the map. So, interacting with them reveals a huge chunk of the map for you, and it also shows you and highlights certain features that you may otherwise miss. Now to get up onto them, you usually have to figure a way of doing that, and there is usually a singular approach to doing that. Now sometimes these these are approaches are protected by machines. Now the strength of these machines will vary from location to locations. These ones aren't too bad, as long as you can actually get the damage in on them, but they do hit very hard. Now this is by no means the type of approach you should have taken to taking down machines. I'm on my strider here and using it to basically kick a machine apart. But as you can see that doesn't last for too long because I soon get knocked off my uh, little horse. So I did bite off far more than I can chew here and as you can see I've got next to no ammo left. Combat in this game is very very interesting and all these sort of areas are best taken with a tactical approach. And that's something I didn't do, I simply charged right in here. So it could have gone up pretty badly, but fortunately the tournament came by at just an opportune moment, allowing me to get up there on top of him to and out of a head. bad situation there. Now once you're on here, you simply climb right to the top, as long as you don't misjudge and fall all the way down. She's grabbing her ears there because of a sonic attack made by the machines we've just left. Now aside from being extremely huge, these tool necks do provide for a singular opportunity. They give you a great vantage point of your surrounding area and you can see that just as I come to the top here. It really does give an indication of just how stunning the world is in Horizon. Now as I was saying back there I did charge in headlong and come under a bit of uh, aggressive attack from the machines back there. Now the great thing about the combat in this game is that it's eminently possible to take on opponents that are many many times more stronger than you and that does take a bit of planning. You've got various traps you can use and various other weapons. You can lay trip wires and you can also use ropes to try and pin the various machines down. When used in the right combination and when used with the environment around you it's possible to feel very much like a hunter and take down some extremely strong opponents. And this is very much one of the best strengths of this game. Now unfortunately I haven't got any footage showing you any of those scenarios, but it's something I will do in a future video. So there what's happened is that I've disrupted the signal that the tall neck was actually broadcasting around this area. And you don't want to get stomped by those big hooves there. I've done that before and they'll squash you dead instantly. So here, the map, you can see the fog of war is now lifted and it's drawing in many of the elements I would have had to spend a lot of time otherwise finding. As you know, I'm a big fan of exploration games, and as I mentioned in the previous video, I spent a huge amount of time just roaming around this game, taking in the gorgeous environments. And every time I think I've seen something very, very impressive, I end up walking a little bit further around the map and finding something even more impressive. And these tropic-like biomes really are something else. So here I'm en route to one of the cauldrons, like I say, these are optional dungeons, and basically they are rather immense. They're ancient underground fortresses built on technology that has long since been lost. The first cauldron I went into, the first cauldron I think you get an option to go in, is the Cauldron Sigma, or the Sigma Cauldron. And, well, the technology in there is very, very apparent. It literally felt like jumping into some type of sci-fi movie or sci-fi game. This cauldron is a different one, and this is called Cauldron Eleven. Now there's no direct route in here, we've got to go through all these guys. And what's happened is that it's been overrun by nature and we'll see that just as we get inside there. But first I have to take down these human guards. The other cauldron was guarded by machines and that did make for a bit of a challenge. As I mentioned previously, humans are not much of a difficult uh, challenge in this game. They're rather daft, rather dumb. 
But nonetheless, I still do really enjoy the stealth-based elements, and that is generally how I approach nearly all the combat within the game. If I can go stealth, then I will. And it's a good job, I suppose, that she's got red hair, because the tall uh, red-tipped glass here is one of the best hiding spots for her. Now, unfortunately, at this point, I was just about out of ammo, had no arrows left, and just a few little bombs that I can use in my slingshot. But this did keep the challenge interesting, as it meant I had to do the entire cauldron in stealth. Now, you can see the environment here is dramatically different to that of the outside world. Very much technology orientated in here. But you can see it is falling apart, it's been taken over by humans of this era, and, well, it does look a little bit rusted and a little bit downtrodden. By comparison to the other cauldron I've done, Cauldron Sigma, there is a stark contrast. And I've got some brief footage we can have a look at there. The quality is a little bit lower because the other footage is captured on the uh, PlayStation's DVR. But nonetheless, you can see just how different it actually looks there. I've got to admit that I find the art direction of these cauldrons to be absolutely spectacular. Literally, stepping into the Cauldron Sigma was like stepping into a totally different world. Very different experience to that which is experienced elsewhere in the game. I really do feel then that the contrast between these two cauldrons really is noteworthy. Here, the cauldron itself feels very much dead and very much abandoned, Must yet at the same either. time it feels a full of one. life and that's due to the uh, plants here huh? and the human activity as well as the human opponents that of course are scattered around the place. The purpose of the cauldrons of course is to basically give you an upgrade. Now you saw earlier, right at the start of the video, with Adai's staff I was able to take control of the Strider and here. then get on it and ride it. Get a move on and now search. the ability to do that is gained from coming into these cauldrons. Every time you take control of the Push central down, core within the cauldron <laughs> you gain the ability to take control of further machines or additional machines but these are usually well protected in the Sigma Cauldron, you're protected by a giant the machine. Here, is protected by a small army of humans. Now, you may be wondering how I'm managing to take out the opponent so easily there, but it was simply because I had the difficulty setting set way down. As I'm playing most games, I do tend to switch between various difficulty levels, and it depends on the opponent that I'm facing against. Now, that's not to make them easier to deal with, it's simply to avoid certain frustration levels. In the case of the humans, like I've said multiple times, they are a little bit dumb, so it's just easier to get them dealt with and get them out the way. So the machines, on the other hand, are they're pretty stunning combat challenges, and hopefully I'll show you that in another video. This guy is now out for the count. He has left his big cannon there on the floor, and at the moment I don't need it, but I did need it towards the end of this section when the area is basically rushed full of bad guys but now that Already. i've dealt with the opponents that are in this area at the moment i can turn to overriding the core itself now despite looting all the uh, men here unfortunately you still didn't get the resources needed to create more arrows you do need wire that's what i'm short of at the moment and wire generally comes from machines and there's no machines in here so here is the core and you simply stick your staff in here and it will upgrade. So you'll now be able to take control of additional machines. So machines you can take control of do serve different functions. Some like of them it. you can ride More and others become avoid. attack puppets for you. They will simply attack all the enemies in the area. Whilst getting into a cauldron can be a bit of a challenge, getting out can be just as much of a challenge and usually provides its unique uh, puzzle to do so. This part here I felt was particularly H.R. Geiger-esque especially when seen in the alternate blue and black colours. Quite a creepy vibe to it, that's for sure. Now, things didn't plan out too well for the bad dudes living here because activating the core also meant that the machines within this cauldron were also activated and those machines would go equally after me as well as the other humans in the area. That meant that from time to time I'd be fending off for both humans as well as uh, machines as well. But they'd also fight off each other, so sometimes you could sit back and let them take each other out. And of course, there was also plenty of time for sightseeing, and there are some rather interesting things to actually check out in these areas. 
eventually I was out of the cauldron and the enemy I think realized they had dug a little bit too deeply a little bit too greedily so there we have it then that's a cauldron within horizon a very interesting distraction from the rest of the game and a very very well realized both in terms of the gameplay they present as well as the exemplary visuals that are there all that was remaining was for me to get entirely over this area I'll be back at some point with another look at Horizon for now as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.